Hi, today I want to say goodbye to an old friend, my Zotac M551, my old barebone that's died on the 1st of June 2018. So goodbye and I have reinstalled most of my software. So it took a little bit to get working again with all my video editing equipment and microphone and so on. But now I'm back and can work on my new Intel Nuke Skull Canyon and also with Ubuntu 18.04 and also I use now KiCad 5.0. And today's topic is my 80 tiny 24 project I've done a prototype and also a small PCB or hundreds of small PCBs and I can show you the result and also how I do the programming with the 80 mega 2560 and how to wire up the prototype and also a small demo sketch with the Arduino IDE. And first a look at my bench and the PCBs I've get delivered from a PCB board house. And you see here all the small PCBs in the size of five by five millimeters and also the back side here. And to get started, I use also an QFN20 prototype board because I ordered the 80 tiny 24 in the QFN20 package to get a smaller PCB footprint. And I ordered also thousands of small LEDs. This is all 0402 packages LEDs. So I have to be very careful before I solder them because they are the size of a small sand grain. And here are also the result, the soldered small PCBs with the 80 tiny 24. And on the back side, we see the LEDs and also some current limiting resistors. But before I start with the PCB, I also built a small prototype with the QFN20 adapter so I can put all the things on the breadboard and just program my code to the chip and test all the blinking LEDs. And for programming, I use the 80 mega 2560 for as an ISB or in-system serial programmer to program my 80 tiny 24 chips. And to show you my wiring, I use now the fritzing software so I can easily wire up here the, the breadboard connection and also the 80 mega what have you chip whatever I use for showing you the wiring. So it's a little bit easier and maybe a little bit convenient to see how I wire up all my projects. So I use the SPI bus to program the 80 tiny chip. So we have to wire up the MISO, the master in slave out and the MOSI, the master out slave in pin and also the clock pin to the chip. And to reset it, we use the GPIO pin 10 and also surely the supply pins. So we need the ground and also VCC. Or in my case, I use either 5 volt or the 3.3 volt rail because the 80 tiny chip are able to use a wide range of supply voltages from 1.8 volt up to 5.5 volt. But the maximum is 6 volts. So before we start to programming our chips, we have to prepare the 80 mega 2560. And this is this board. And we use this demo sketch the, from the examples, the Arduino ISP sketch and just burn them. Just upload to our 80 mega. So this 80 mega is connected to TTY USB 0 and we have the 80 mega 2560 chip. So just load this to our mega and we are done. And the next step is write our 80 tiny 24 chip and 
as in chip we use the ATtiny24. But before we begin we go to our preferences and add an additional board manager URL and let's see this a little bit bigger. I used this from DI Malice, this ATtiny board manager configuration. And then we can go to the tools and to the board manager and just search for AT Tiny by David A. Mellis. And as you see, I've already installed this package. So and then the next step is to set our board and we search for the AT Tiny 24, 44 and 84 chip. And then I set the AT Tiny 24 processor. I only use the one megahertz internal clock. And for the Arduino ISP, for the programmer, we have to set Arduino as ISP and set the port to TTY USB where our 80 mega ISP is connected. And then we just go to sketch and upload using programmer. And we can see what's going on. So the chips have written. So we read our chip and identify this as 80 mega 24 and just compile our sketch right to our chip and just verify by reading that our flash program is programmed. And as you see, we are successfully programmed our chip. A small look to iCAD 5.0. As you see, I imported my sketch from the previous KiCad version and maybe something is not working, but I don't remap the symbols. So as you see, we have for nothing found new symbols. So if you draw a new schematic, just use the new symbols. But in my case, I use an older version. So all the symbols are stays the same. So let's close it. And here's a small schematic I drawn with KiCad 4 or 4.2, I think. And I just draw some power flags, some small test points and labels for the VCC and for the ground and only use four connections, the GPIO pin four, five and six. This is also the clock, the MISO and the MOSI pin. And we need this for programming the reset pin and all the LEDs go to the three GPIO pins wire, small limiting resistor to ground. So if the pin is high, the LED lit up. And if it's, if it's low, the LED stays off. So after drawing the schematic, we save our netlist to our file. So I don't want to save this. And then we go to our small PCB. So maybe I switch on and off the back side, maybe also the footprints from the back. So this is front side with the small LEDs and the limiting resistors and just two pads for ground and the VCC line. So this is for a three volt point cell. And we have also one pad for programming. This is for the reset pin. So after showing the front side we can also switch to the back side and this is the QFN20 package with just some wires so we can connect the front and the back side the PCB and as you see this is six millimeter by six millimeter buff but we have some clearance between the real size so and now let's also see the 3D view. So this is the size of water of a fingernail. So as you see, this is the three LEDs, the limiting resistor, and we can also populate a small capacitor here just for decoupling just between ground and VCC. So that's all the brief look to PiCat 5.0. That's all for today. Thanks for clicking my video and I hope you enjoy it and learn something today. Thanks to all my subscribers. I think now it's over 6,000. Thank you all for just watching some of my videos. So I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.